sorry about the logistics uh, hi everyone am i audible now yeah okay rob you can hear me from here i <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, uh, the the publication that I was talking about is this. Uh, this is a meta analysis of single arm survival studies. Uh, a distribution free approach. So you don't have to assume any shape function or a or a scale function on the on the Kaplan Meier curves to pull the. Uh, to pull the KMs from the from the various studies, so it's just a product limit estimator uh, approach uh, where uh, like uh, it 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 doesn't assume any any kind of distribution and pulls directly the the survival probabilities at various time point from uh, from various studies. So uh, the existing methods that uh, that currently we have, whether it's pooling the hazard ratio or uh, like the parametric NMA pooling the survival probability, so uh, they they use the proportions to pool that, and uh, one of the limitation is is that they don't account for the correlation between the time. So if uh, for example, if the survival probability at five months or at six months x and y, uh, they don't assume that there is any any kind of correlations between them. Uh, they'll pool uh, all the survival probabilities at x and all the survival probabilities at y with, without assuming the correlation. That is currently the methods that we are following. Uh, the the challenge is that uh, if it it assumes a strong uh, assumption like a distribution uh, where uh, you have to assume the shape or a or a scale of the of the Kaplan Meier curve, uh, and sometimes uh, the pooled curve can uh, the the pooled curve produced from the existing app, uh, from the existing approaches uh, they produce like a increasing curve or a or a non uh, non increasing curve they they can't produce that. The solution is that uh, we may have to uh, put a distribution free approach uh, and using the extension of the DL method, uh, we can also use the random effect mo effect model and it does not require any kind of assumptions on the shape and the scale parameter of the, of the distribution that we are assuming. The advantage of this approach, the, the approach that is described in that publication is a, is a distribution free approach. Uh, and it also incorporates the between is study uh, heterogeneity. It also handles the sensor data, which you can't handle via just pulling the hazard ratio because hazard ratio can't tell you the whole the whole story. If you pull the Kaplan Meier, it you can also take into account the the sensor data. The output from this method, uh, and that that's that's the best part because. Uh, when you pull the hazard ratio, you will get uh, the uh, at at last you will get the hazard ratio. But when you pull the Kaplan Meier curves, at last you will be getting a pooled Kaplan Meier curve. So once you have the pooled Kaplan Meier curve, you can do n number of things. Like for extrapolate negate, you can fit uh, any of the distributions on it according to NICE TSC fourteen and and twenty one. The uh, Definitely, it has some disadvantages as well. The first is that uh, approximation issue because this is a uh, this is not assuming any any distribution. It is a product limit estimator uh, method, so uh, it it uses some of the approximation like arc sign. So when you'll read the publication, you'll find that there are a, a lot of formulas uh, in that which use the arc sign uh, arc sign approximation. So sometimes. In case of uh, rare events, it will not give you the pooled Kaplan Meier very very appropriately. It it is also dependent on the published data, so uh, and that's that's I think the well known disadvantage. If, if you are taking anything from the from the published data, you are assuming that whatever they have published, it's it's right. If that's not right, then that's the uh, problem. But it but it will affect your results. Uh, the assumption of the independence. So uh, this method accounts for the between study uh, hetero heterogeneity, uh, but the conditional survival that this that this method is is assuming is uh, basically it it is assuming that they are independent of of each other. Uh, they are not dependent. Like the conditional survival, let's say at at x month and at y uh, and at y month, they are independent uh, each each other. And definitely the compli the complexity of implementation because when you read the publication, you will see there are a lot of formulas, and you have to if you are not a R programmer uh, or not very well uh, R R programmer, you will be not be able to implement this application. But 
uh, amongst the four this four uh, disadvantage i have uh, reduced one of disadvantage which is complexity of implementation i have a r package open source r package which you can use uh, and also you can if you want to see the codes of that you can because that's an open source on the cran so you uh, so you can see that as well as uh, because when i have created that r r package i think uh, uh, like till now it, it has around 3500 downloads till now and uh, the uh, the the feedback that i received is that uh, it like uh, it's it's hard to use that package because definitely the uh, the the function has a lot of argument so that's why i have created the uh, the r shiny application as from that so yeah this is the r package that uh, i is that i'm mentioning you can access it uh, from here when the slides will be available and, or you can search it on the r. the workflow of this uh, r shiny application is that it is secured by the auth0 so what i did i have not created a r shiny and deployed it on shiny apps.io because it does not uh, like you don't have to be a programmer to deploy it on the shiny uh, shiny apps.io uh, what what i uh, what i used here for the deployment i have used aws and uh, uh, docker container to uh, to package the code in the in the container and then uh, using uh, and then using the putty and and winscp i have deployed it on the aws linux server also for the uh, like for the security i have used uh, nginx and auth0 so auth0 provides you a nice interface of logging and uh, tracking who is uh, who is logging or who is using and the time of the uh, of of the application so i have used that the it it this this application requires uh, the input uh, as a pseudo ipd so for example if you have five kaplan years so you have to digitize that generate the pseudo ipd from it and then you have to put it in a uh, in a data frame or in a excel file so this this uh, like this application comes with a sample file as well so you can download the sample file populate that with the with the pseudo ipd and it it has only three columns time event and the uh, either the study name or a treatment name, like a unique identifier for that data. Uh, so that's that's the input this this platform takes, and the output, uh, what this platform will give you, which you can use uh, like uh, uh, for you uh, for your purpose, and it also give you the table which you can download and use it in Excel models as well. So output is a pooled Kaplan meter using random and fixed effect models, pooled survival proportions using random and and fixed effect models. And then median time and restricted mean for the pooled curve using a uh, random fixed effect and goodness of fit statistic as well, like uh, hetero heterogeneity Q, I square or, or H square. Uh, this is the interface here. So uh, like this is, this is the landing page. I'll be showing you uh, like the, the demonstration of, of the tool as well, but you can scan this QR to go to the uh, tool. And this is uh, you'll be this this interface you'll be getting after after authentication, and uh, this you'll be getting after running the analysis. So let me show you the tool. Yeah. So as you can see here, I am not running the code locally, not running it on the Shiny Cloud uh, or Shiny Apps.io. I have created a domain name for this, and I'm just uh, just writing that domain. And you can access it on on your laptop as well, just writing the domain name. So uh, here you will have to uh, register it. It's like normal name and and email address and a password, or you can sign it with Google as well. It also uh, like auth and that's the best part for the auth zero when you deploy it uh, via auth zero. It also provides you the functionality to log in via single sign on for uh, for the company purpose or via. Uh, via LinkedIn, via MS Office, and Google as, as well. So I'm just signing in with my Google. Yeah. So uh, after after logging, you'll be getting this, this kind of a screen where uh, we have also provided generation of pseudo IPD, but I'm assuming it's optional because everyone is familiar of GeoT algorithm and uh, they have their own R codes and and the shiny interface to generate the pseudo IPD using the GeoT algorithm. So, but yeah, for the for the if if you don't have that, uh, this this uh, this tool provides you that uh, interface as well. So you can just uh, so let me show you. Yeah, so you can just put time survival prop 
probability uh, like time uh, patients at at risk table and you can uh, click on the below button to generate the pseudo I, ipd but i'm i'm assuming that everyone will generate the pseudo ipd out, outside of this application once uh, you'll generate the pseudo ipd you can uh, run the tool like this this tool comes with the some sample data as well and you can also upload the custom data so when you'll be clicking custom data uh, you can up upload it from here and if you want to download the sample data you can download it from here uh, and then populate it and then upload it in on this interface but i'll be running it through the sample data so these are the uh, labels like the third column that that i mentioned and once you upload the data you can select some of the data summary part as well like uh, what the the summary table of of all the of all the studies that you have uploaded like number of patients events median survival restricted mean and all thing and also you can also see the km plot now when uh, and if i show you the data here just so uh, you, you can see here it's three column time <coughs> event and uh, and label which is the study name or the or the treatment name now, when you run the analysis yeah so uh, af after running the analysis the first table that you'll be getting is the median and restricted mean estimate so you can see median uh, and uh, like yeah, median and mean both from the fixed effect and uh, and random effect model you'll see goodness of fit statistic and you'll be seeing the pooled kaplan mirror so the gray ones are the kaplan mirror from the original studies and the red one with the confidence interval is the pooled kaplan mirror both from the fixed and the random effect model and you can see with the random we have a wider confidence in interval uh th this tool also give you the uh, the tabular result so this is the pooled survival probability at different time points with the lower end and upper bound you can download it either in csv or in pdf for the for for the use and at very last this tool will also give you what what are the studies which are used to generate the so here you can see if the check is okay or not okay so if it is not okay that means that the study is not contributing to the result if uh, every study okay that means all the studies that you have uploaded the data is in well appropriate format yeah yeah just wrapping <laughs> just last slide last thing so the data will be in the in a appropriate format and uh, uh, and you'll be getting the results as as per expectation so yeah I, that's all and at very last you can log out the best part of this tool none of the data that uh, that you will be going to upload will be going to store on any server. So we uh, so we are not retrieving the data in this in this tool. You can upload the data as soon as you log out from the session. All the analysis that you did, whether you have uploaded the data uh, and like uh, or or downloaded, nothing is tracking via application. So you can just use it for your own own purpose. And currently, it's open source. Later on, we are planning to add some more functionalities in it and make it like subscription based based models so yeah that's it <coughs>
for ease of use it would be better to expand to include digitized survival probabilities as an input uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the suggestion, uh, Kashif. Definitely, uh, we we can uh, expand this uh, question. The CIs are very narrow compared to the individual curves in the program. Is actually capturing between study heterogeneity for the random effect model. Uh, was that dummy data you were using in your demonstration, or was it? Yeah, I think so uh, uh, this is uh, basically, uh, so so uh, Kashif, if you see the CIs for the fixed effect model, definitely they are uh, uh, they are narrow because the data that we are using from all the Kaplan Meier curves is, uh, is a longer, uh, is a longer follow up time point. So we have sufficient data to actually estimate the, uh, to use and estimate uh, the, the product limit estimator. While if you see the random effect model, it has a broader CIs because we are, uh, you, uh, because definitely it is it is accounting for uh, for between study heterogeneity. I hope I have answered. Good the question. Um, yeah. One of the biggest downsides of churning out is repeatability. Is there a way to output the code? Uh, output the code? Yeah, so that you can then put it in a script and do it exactly the same every time. Uh, yes. So for this one, uh, definitely, I think. Uh, uh, so output the code with the with the placeholders with the values that that you are saying because uh, for this one I have created the R package you can replicate it you can uh, use that use that package but if you are using uh, like for example shiny app with some of the values uh, and you can export the code I think you can it's 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 doable you can you can export the code with the with the values in it uh, like. The world reports that that we export using R markdown, the HTMLs, and all those, but uh, you can export the R, R code as well. That's, that's useful yeah. because yeah, yeah. said that one of the complaints. Is <laughs> <laughs> no, so definitely. I think uh, being <laughs> yeah, being one of the uh, shiny users since last eight months, and I'm very very fond of shiny. I think anything can can be doable via via shiny. <laughs> Just a last question from Roberts before we wrap up this session. Yeah, so I think. Darren's touching on is, is probably a really nice next step is if you can take because you've got your, your final yeah. program and then you've got the app and then if you can find a way to extract out from the application all of the data store it as data in a in a folder alongside your your, your package code with a script pre pre created oh, yeah yeah like a super powerful yeah, one. yeah. someone can read it exactly what they did they could send it to a uh, you know, to a client or whatever else like this is exactly what I've done um, yeah on R or do it here so you've got two options. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It, it, it will be useful. Great stuff. Thank Any you very questions? much, everyone. Sorry, Judith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.